Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Chuck, Director of the UCLA Kidney Cancer Program, and I'm thrilled you can join us today on this important topic, treatment of large kidney tumors. We frequently see videos and information about management of small tumors, but what about these large tumors? We see them and we clearly have different options for patients who have large kidney tumors. So historically, most kidney cancers present this way with a large mass. This was before we had all these fancy imaging studies and found a lot of these tumors incidentally. So large renal tumors we consider are seven centimeters or greater, or really what we call three inches or greater. Now today, unlike in prior eras, this only accounts for about 15 to 25 percent of the kidney tumors. We are fortunate to find many tumors early with imaging, but today we still can see large kidney tumors, and again, these still come to our clinic on a weekly basis. Now, most large masses can be symptomatic from local damage or destruction from the tumor. They can also have spread, unfortunately, to other sites. Classically, we had this triad where you would come in, you'd have a flank mass where you can palpate, you'd have pain on your side, and you'd have blood in the urine. And that triad was how kidney cancer patients used to present in the prior eras, prior to the advent of CT scans and MRI scans, finding a lot of these things early. Now again, this is how patients classically would present, and we still see this for these large tumors. Gross blood, we call that gross hematuria. Flank pain, pain on your side, or an abdominal bulge or a mass. And again, a large tumor can disfigure or distort someone's abdominal cavity. Now the workup, when we see a patient with a large kidney tumor, we do lab tests to assess the signs and symptoms of what we call systemic or whole body disease. We can look for things like platelets that are high or calcium, look at blood count to see anemia. We want to look critically to evaluate areas outside the kidney to look for any evidence of any spread. We usually always image the chest to make sure, and that's with a chest CT. As a chest x-ray, it's not very sensitive to pick up you know, a small volume of disease that has moved outside the kidney. And then if suspicious, if someone has bone pain or maybe headaches or seizures, we always want to image the brain or the bone if we feel like there are concerns. And again, the kidney cancer can spread to all other parts of the body. So in someone with a large tumor, we always take this very seriously at staging someone to make sure we understand the full extent of their disease. Now, is imaging sufficient to call something cancer? Well, small tumors are potentially cancer or they could be benign. Most of our large tumors have a much higher risk of being cancer. As you see here, the risk of cancer is 0 to 100. As you go larger, and we're talking about the large tumors here, the risk of something being cancer is greater than 95% when something gets greater than 13 centimeters. Clearly benign tumors don't have that aggressive biology and they're not allowing themselves to grow to a very large size. So we would say about 90% or 95% or greater of, uh, of these tumors are going to be renal cell cancers or kidney cancers. We do see other types of cancers that can arise in the kidney, but those are going to be less common than the renal cell cancers. And without disease outside the kidney, a biopsy is not really indicated or needed most of the time because we have such a high risk of cancer um, in these large kidney tumors. And then a kidney cancer is really presumed but not uh, confirmed until we have a tissue diagnosis. So again, it is it's just a renal mass suspicious for a kidney cancer. Now, radical nephrectomy has been the mainstay of treatment in most large or very large kidney tumors. And that's because in most patients that we see, if you see here, this would be the tumor, that red area, and then maybe there'd be a sliver of normal kidney. Clearly, there's not much to save in that organ. So thus, the kidney in this situation would be removed along with the fat and uh, the surrounding connective tissue we call the gerotus fascia. So in these very large kidney tumors, it's rare that we would be able to do a partial nephrectomy. And as you see again, this tumor has now been eaten or taken up by this uh, uh, a tumor. Now, partial nephrectomy, again, for some tumors we, that are large, we can consider doing a partial nephrectomy. It depends on a lot of things. There is things that we consider looking at, like is there significant normal kidney to save? Would the patient benefit from kidney preservation? Are we confident we can remove everything without leaving something behind? And the surgeon feels the complications are low. 
This is, you know, an example of a 14 centimeter large mass where there's still plenty of normal kidney left behind um, and if you did a partial nephrectomy. So in that case, we did a partial for a very large kidney tumor, it made sense. But for the most part, again, the kidney and then the tumor, for the most part, uh, we do radical nephrectomies for these large and invasive kidney tumors that are, you know, greater than 10 centimeters. Now, you see here, occasionally, again, we can do a partial nephrectomy, and the kidney still can look healthy. This is a 7.5 centimeter renal mass in a young individual, and looking after six months later, there's still plenty of normal kidney left, and you see the right versus left. This looks like someone took a bite out of it. You know, we did preserve a lot of kidney function. So occasionally, for a large tumor over 7 centimeters, we will consider doing a partial nephrectomy. Now the surgical approach, it really depends on a lot of factors. So large tumors often behave in an invasive manner. It's critical to understand the relationship of these kidneys to some of their surrounding structures. These kidneys, which may have a tumor, they may have a tumor which is close to the liver or the pancreas. Maybe it's a budding small bowel or some vessels or maybe inside of a vessel. If there are other organs that are involved, like the liver, pancreas, or these vessels, we should always discuss this or approach this in a multidisciplinary setting and we often invite some of our colleagues from other surgical disciplines to help us for these large or invasive kidney tumors. So the surgical technique, it has changed over time. For large tumors traditionally we used to make very large open incisions, make a big cut, get our hands in there and take the tumor out. But over the past one or two decades, there's been a tremendous advancement in how we do minimally invasive surgery. And these large tumors still need to be removed through an incision, but sometimes we can minimize the size of this incision or make it in a part of the body which is less painful. And minimally invasive surgery really um, uh, is a term to describe when we use laparoscopic equipment. These are keyhole incisions. And either the surgeon can hold them which we call laparoscopic surgery, or the robot can hold them, and that's called robotic-assisted surgery. Now, open surgery, here's some expectations that you may have if you have an open surgery. The team will plan the approach based on the tumor size and your body habitus. In general, the hospital stay could be between three to seven days, and that depends uh, widely on the surgery that you've done. Are other organs involved? How much uh, um, pain medication do you need? How quickly do you resume your bowel function? And again, the diet and pain control are often the barriers for discharge. But again, most patients can get home usually between three to seven days for a surgery that involves a large kidney tumor. And most patients can resume normal activity in general four to eight weeks, depending on what you're doing. If you're a, maybe a professional cage fighter, maybe you spend 12 weeks recovering, but if you're getting back to office work, we're talking maybe four to six weeks. But again, a larger incision, maybe a little bit larger or longer recovery. Now, there are many ways to get to the kidney, okay? And the kidneys sit in, inside the abdomen, behind the abdominal organs. Uh, it's called the space called the retroperitoneum. And when we see patients who have kidney tumors and the kidney, uh, we try to understand the location and the patient's body habitus and decide what's the best surgical approach. If we're going to do an open incision, this would be a subcostal incision. You cut across and you cut through the rectus muscle. That's one approach to get to the kidney. There are midline incisions where you may go up and down. I like this where you can split the six-pack muscles that are hiding, but they're there, and you can avoid going through muscle. It's probably a quicker recovery. Um, this is called um, a flank incision. We do this off the tip of the 11th rib. In the old days, the older urologists used to remove a rib. We don't usually do that in the, this era, but it's a good way to get down on the kidney going through the side, and sometimes we can avoid the abdominal cavity altogether. Now a chevron incision, this looks kind of like a Mercedes sign. These are for really large invasive tumors maybe that are invading into veins, but we make an incision like that. It's the same way our liver transplant surgeons do their liver transplants. Finally, this is an approach I've been using for larger tumors. It's called a modified Maguchi. You go up and, uh, you, uh, and across. And again, this midline incision, you potentially can avoid cutting through some of those muscles, but you still need to go lateral. It's called a modified Maguchi. Now, closing, uh, choosing the incision is based, a lot of this is on the surgeon's preference and comfort with the approach, um, and that might be the biggest factor in determining the incision you get. Uh, the size of the tumor may dictate the exposure. Do you need, you know, a very large incision or a really, really large incision? 
Uh, is it unilateral or bilateral? Do you need to be on the other side of the body? Uh, maybe there's a lymph node on near the other kidney or by the aorta and you need to be on the right and left side and you need access to both. Um, and then the body habitus, larger patients sometimes need uh, more exposure because the distance between their skin to their abdominal contents is much deeper. Recovery time again, you see all these zigzags and crosses, it depends. A lot of these can hurt because you're cutting through muscle. And the more muscle that is cut, the more post-op discomfort for a large tumor. Going between muscles midline may limit the pain, but is not always possible. Um, and staying behind the abdominal cavity, in the area we call that your flank, uh, that may speed up bowel recovery. And that is uh, that incision over here. Again, a lot of ways to get to the kidney. Now, to try to limit or minimize the pain, we have a couple tools or tricks that are at our disposal. To limit post-op pain, we have things we can ask our anesthesia providers to put in an epidural. A lot of people are familiar with epidural catheters. When women deliver children, they get an epidural and they're having their uh, delivery uh, or a C-section and they're awake and they're not feeling any pain. This is a temporary uh, catheter and it can uh, minimize pain over the first few days. We also have a tool we call the on-cube uh, catheter. We basically, a surgeon can put a catheter underneath the incision and there's a little ball and it infuses like lidocaine-like medication, bupivacaine, which can numb up the incision if maybe you're averse to having a catheter placed in the back. Both of these are, are ways to minimize a lot of the discomfort after surgery by different catheter-based techniques. Now, it's important to recognize a lot of the big and very big tumors can actually now be removed minimally invasively. Again, minimally invasive is how we discuss a keyhole type approach with laparoscopic incisions. These are instruments that are basically placed. If you're holding the instruments, the surgeon calls this laparoscopic surgery. If you're handing off these instruments to a robot and have the robot holding the equipment, we call that robotic assisted laparoscopic surgery. The robot actually doesn't do the operation. We control the robot. The robot is just an enabling tool. So minimally invasive surgery often can reduce some things like bleeding, pain, hospital stay, and post-operative recovery. And if it's feasible and safe, we always would want to recommend this approach. Robotic versus laparoscopic, that often depends on the surgeon's preference and comfort. The laparoscopic approach might be a slightly less costly because it might be a quicker in some physicians' hands and the equipment might be a little cheaper, but over the long term, these are just small difference in cost. The robotic approach does give the surgeon an extra instrument. When I do robotic surgery, I have three hands. I hold two at a time and I can toggle between a third instrument. So it's like I'm operating with an extra hand inside the body. And I feel that this also allows us to have finer control because even if a surgeon had a tremor, your robot actually can minimize that and your robot can also change where your large movements could be changed to small movement by changing uh, with a fine, uh, a fine tuned control. And in general, the hospital stay after a minimally invasive surgery, even for a very large tumor, is probably one or two days. Um, and the barriers are also pain control and ambulation and diet. We still need to get this type of kidney uh, tumor in a bag, and we then pull it through a small incision. We try to move this between the muscles so there's less post-op pain. And so here's just an example. This is a 15 or 16 centimeter tumor up by the spleen, up by the diaphragm. This patient saw many other doctors and said this needed to be done. One said a thoracoabdominal incision, which I didn't discuss. They needed to be up in the diaphragm, cutting into the chest. Other one said a big chevron. We actually did this minimally invasively. And here's that large tumor, which turned out to be actually 18 centimeters. And we did that minimally invasively. And we did that with the robot, several tiny incisions and we put it in a bag and we squeezed it out that incision. That patient stayed in the hospital one day as opposed to four to seven days. And again, a lot depends on the patient's anatomy and the location of other organs. We never wanna do things that are considered unsafe, but a lot of times we can push the envelope with our minimally invasive techniques. So if you have a big tumor, we do have a big team here at UCLA, a big comprehensive kidney cancer program, and we'd love to see you if you're willing to come or ask uh, uh, us any questions. We do video and virtual visits. Um, we have a video resource center. Some of these videos are being compiled. If you hover over the QR code, you might be able to get access to this comprehensive video list. Uh, or if you want to support our program and allow us to make more videos, you know, it's always welcomed. And if you want more information about kidney cancer, our webpage, we try to make 
up to date with as much information as possible. We have information on the UCLAHealth.org website uh, and feel free to check it out. And thank you so much for your time.